Hi, this is Ken Boyd with the Accounting Accidentally website. You can find hundreds of blog posts here at the top, and if you slide down to the middle of the page, you'll see over 400 accounting videos on my YouTube channel. And I wanted to talk about today a difficult subject, which is pension accounting that appears on both the CPA exam and in undergraduate intermediate accounting courses. This is really misunderstood. So let's do an overview for starters. If you're a business that offers a pension, the risk that you face is that there's not enough money in the bucket, if you will, to pay the pension. And to understand how pensions work, the first thing you need to know is the two different types of pensions. And I'll say at the top that defined benefit pensions here in red are gradually going away and being replaced by defined contribution. So defined contribution. In this case, the company is obligated to pay a certain percentage of an employee's salary into a plan, and those dollars are invested. So the risk to the employer is that they don't put the required dollars into the plan, required contribution. So I say here, the employee, not the company, the employee faces the risk that the investment performance is not sufficient to pay pension benefits at the end. In defined contribution, the employee holds the risk that the investment performance won't be good enough to pay enough of a pension, however you want to define enough. Defined benefit, these are the plans that are going away. The risk that I explained above about investment performance is held by the company. If there's not enough assets in the plan, the company has an unfunded liability and that liability must be paid by the company, which brings us to the accounting questions that are on the CPA exam. Whichever plan you choose, this is about matching the liability, the liability being that you have to pay an employee a pension, with the investments that you have generating a return on dollars in the bucket, if you will, the bucket being the dollars available to pay pensions that are invested. Some other details on the investments. We'll look at the rate of return on the investment. Money managers who invest pension plans have to think about when do the funds need to be available because they have to liquidate gradually and pay pensions to former employees over time. So they have to match up who's retiring in 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. And lastly, when do you stop paying? And that's determined by actuaries who determine the probability of death of employees in a particular pool that are inside of a pension. So you've got to match up liabilities with investments. So if you have five employees retiring in five years and you know based on the salaries and their years of service what their defined benefit will be, you have to invest to meet that liability in the future if you run a defined benefit plan. What we'll cover on the next video is the components that make up pension expense, which is heavily tested on the CPA exam, and go into some other topics. Remember that I have a new site, Conference Room. You can go to Conference Room up here in the feed. And what you'll find when you go into the feed is that I'm teaching classes, this one being the five biggest topics on the FAR test of the CPA exam. Here are the topics that we cover, both in the link right here and if you go to courses you'll see the same thing and if you sign up for conference room you will be notified with times dates costs to attend these courses so i hope you give it a try thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time